This video covers quasi-experiments, including an introduction to the instrumental variables technique. At the end of this video, you should be able to identify a quasi-experimental technique appropriate for estimating a treatment effect in a given situation, and apply the instrumental variables method to estimate a treatment effect using a natural experiment and evaluate its validity. We discussed in the videos on experiments that uh, experiments have numerous advantages, uh, namely that a well-designed experiment can help us to measure the causal effect of a policy or a program. Uh, however, we also noted that experiments are not always feasible uh, due to cost, practical, or ethical reasons. However, there are other situations where we would still like to estimate the causal effect of some policy or program. And if an experiment is not feasible for one of those reasons, we might like to try to find a situation where we can uh, still estimate the, the impact of um, whatever that policy or program that treatment is. Um, one way that we might try to do that is to find a situation where the treatment has almost been randomly assigned um, already for some non-experimental reason. Uh, so we're going to explore uh, in this video and uh, two videos that follow three ways that we can estimate causal effects using these so-called natural experiments. Uh, natural experiment meaning that uh, there was not an intention to run an experiment and yet uh, we can still um, estimate a causal effect in somewhat the same way that we might um, uh, do, do so with an experimental setting. Uh, so we will discuss three methods and we'll explore each one with an example. Uh, instrumental variables uh, will be covered in this video. Differences in differences and regression discontinuity will be explored in subsequent videos. So as a first uh, example where we might apply a quasi-experiment, let's consider the following question. What is the effect of military service on earnings? Uh, before we jump into that uh, specific quasi-experimental method, uh, let's think about how we might attempt to answer this question uh, without uh, any kind of experiment or quasi-experiment. We might like to collect data on individuals that are known by uh, the subscript I. Uh, we might like to know their earnings, and we might like to know whether they served in the military. And so this service variable would be a dummy variable equal to one if the individual is a veteran, meaning that at some point in the past they served in the military, and then zero otherwise. Uh, so think about um, what problems we might have with this regression. So the estimated beta 1 would represent the difference in average earnings between veterans and non-veterans. So certainly that difference could reflect the causal impact of military service but it could also reflect the effect of uh, numerous other things. Military service, for example, may be a proxy for certain types of career interests, certain types of skills, so on and so forth. Another way of saying that is that this uh, regression equation may be subject to omitted variable bias, where those things like career interests and skills uh, may be important omitted variables. So one solution, uh, follows an observation from economist Josh Angrist. So he noted that during the Vietnam era, the Vietnam draft made military service compulsory. Uh, there were, of course, some exceptions, uh, but it was compulsory for individuals uh, who were drafted. And that draft was based on uh, birth dates that were randomly selected. Uh, so this draft in many ways, almost sounds like a randomly controlled trial. Uh, in, in essence, uh, individuals were, were randomly selected to be drafted uh, or not based on their, their birth date. Uh, but there are some caveats. So first, not everyone who was drafted actually served in the military. Uh, so those who were drafted had to meet medical requirements uh, before they had to serve. Some were excused for those uh, medical reasons or for other reasons. Uh, some may have been required to, to serve, but uh, somehow dodged that service requirement. Uh, conversely, not everyone who served in the military was drafted. Uh, volunteers could step forward to serve even if they were not drafted. So we can already see that this makes the situation a little bit more complex. Uh, we can't simply compare those who served during the, the Vietnam era and those who did not uh, because it's not quite random. And yet there's this element of randomness to who served. 
So the solution that uh, Josh Ingress used uh, is the instrumental variables technique. And we would say that he used draft selection as an instrument for military service. So to go into a little bit more detail on this instrumental variables technique, uh, the first thing we have to do to apply instrumental variables is to identify a variable, which we call the instrument, that satisfies two criteria. First, that uh, instrument, that variable, has to be exogenous. Uh, we will uh, talk about a more formal definition of exogenous in another video, uh, but for now, think of exogenous as meaning essentially random. So uh, the instrument that Josh Angers proposed was a selection into the draft, and uh, this, is, uh, this is random because of the random nature of the draft. Those drafts were uh, those who were drafted were drafted based on randomly selected birth dates, and so it does seem like this proposed instrument is indeed exogenous. The second criteria that an instrument has to uh, satisfy is that it has to be related to the independent variable of interest. So recall that we were trying to measure the impact of military service, and so the independent variable of interest is uh, that dummy variable indicating previous military service. And so uh, for the second criteria, we would have to ask, is uh, being drafted related to uh, military service? Uh, this certainly seems to be the case, uh, even though we just argued those two are not one and the same. Uh, if an individual were drafted during the, the Vietnam era, uh, we would think they are probably much more likely to have served in the military during that time uh, than an individual who was not drafted but otherwise would have been eligible. Uh, and this is uh, actually empirically uh, testable. Uh, so uh, once we have identified that instrument, we'll have to apply uh, some additional mechanics, and we're not going to cover those mechanics in, in this video. Uh, so uh, just to give some intuition, we, the, the methodology is essentially going to use the uh, randomness that is uh, inherent to this instrument, to this exogenous variable, and we're going to use that randomness to measure the effect of the, this uh, independent variable that we actually care about. And so uh, without worrying about how we'll actually do that, uh, the takeaway here should be that when we're trying to apply the instrumental variable technique, we want to look for uh, a situation where we can identify some source of randomness in the independent variable that we care about, even if that independent variable is not fully random. And just to uh, close the loop on the, the, the question of the effect of military service on earnings, economist Josh Angrist found using this technique that military service during the Vietnam era reduced the earnings of white veterans, but not non-white veterans. Although not the focus of this video, it's worth noting that uh, there may be external validity concerns if we wish to apply this finding to military service today because there is a different uh, population serving in the military, and it's also a very different setting uh, in the current military versus during the Vietnam era.